Looking for the ultimate AMD Ryzen 7 7800X 3D gaming PC, including the best graphics card, motherboard, RAM, cooler, and more? Let's build it. Hi, welcome back to PC Builder. I'm Jason. The Ryzen 7800X 3D is finally here, and it's the fastest pure gaming CPU on the market. Today, we'll show you how to build the best Ryzen 7 7800X 3D gaming system, including the best GPU for the Ryzen 7800X 3D, the best motherboard, the best RAM, and more to get you the most FPS for your money. Remember, if you get value out of the video, please give it a like so it makes a huge difference to the channel. And of course, subscribe and click that bell icon. That way you get notified when we release cool content. With that, let's jump into it. First off, let's take a quick look at the competition for the Ryzen 7 7800X 3D, which has a $449 MSRP at the time of this video. The Ryzen 7700, which comes with an included Wraith Prism cooler, is currently about $120 cheaper at $327 and has been shown to deliver very good performance at 1440p and 4K. Then we have the current champs, the Ryzen 7950X 3D at $699 MSRP and the i9-13900K currently at $500. $159. There's also the 13900KS with an MSRP of $729 but it's been sold out for some time in the US and it's not clear when it's coming back. You really can't go wrong with any of these CPUs for gaming. They're all insanely fast compared to with previous generations. But compared to its competition, the 7800X 3D delivers leading gaming performance at a much more attractive price, especially when you factor in reduced cooling and the new lower cost AM5 motherboards hitting the market. More on that later in the video. We'll go through specific game performance of our setup when we discuss RAM, as we tested several different kits of RAM to find the best price to performance for the Ryzen 7800X 3D. But let's briefly talk about CPU performance and BIOS configuration. I found out of the box with Precision Boost Overdrive enabled, my CPU single core performance in Cinebench R23 was peaking at just under five gigahertz, which is slightly lower than the five gigahertz advertised single core boost frequency. And we were hitting an all core average frequency of about 4.75 gigahertz. I went in and changed PBO settings to advanced and use the motherboard limits rather than the CPU limits. And this allowed me to hit 5.05 gigahertz single core and slightly over 4.8 gigahertz all core in Cinebench R23. Now this was using the pre-release BIOS, so it's possible this will get cleaned up. But if setting up your Ryzen 7800X 3D, it might be worth testing both configurations to see which one comes out on top. Let's talk about the best GPU for the Ryzen 7 7800X 3D, because the price efficiency in the 7800X 3D allows us to grab the biggest GPU we can for our money, hence the most FPS. Now for our build, Gigabyte sent over their Radeon RX 7900 XTX Aorus Elite, which not only looks amazing, I mean, look at that thing in there, but it has an insane cooler capable of really pushing the upper limits of the 7900 XTX, particularly for those who are looking for manual overclocking headroom. Now for our testing, I enabled auto overclocking in the Radeon Adrenaline software package, but even with that, the GPU never got above 60 degrees Celsius and I feel like with more time, we could do some insane manual overclocking. By the way, let me know down in the comments if you'd like to see us do a GPU overclocking guide video in the future. But I would not pair the Ryzen 7800X3D with anything lower than the 7900XT or the RTX 4070Ti, and really would strongly urge you to drop down to the Ryzen 7700 if it helps you jump up to a higher GPU tier, as that's gonna give you more FPS than jumping up to the 7800X3D, especially if you're targeting 1440p or 4K gaming. But I do think the CPU becomes the obvious choice if you hit the 7900 XTX or RX 4080 and you want more performance, but you can't quite step up to the 4090. And of course, the CPU is a no-brainer for an RTX 4090. I'll leave price links below for all these GPUs so you can check out pricing and availability in your region. Let's talk about the best RAM for the Ryzen 7800X3D because the results will likely surprise you. Now, DDR5, it's still relatively new. And while prices have come down quite a bit, the higher end kits still have a hefty price premium. Now, AMD recommended us using a 6000 CL30 kit using an AMD Expo profile for testing, but we ended up going with this Team Group T-Force White RGB 2x16 gigabyte kit running at 6000 CL30 using an XMP profile. Well, because I wanted an amazing white RGB aesthetic and there just aren't many DDR5 white RGB kits out there yet. But the question is, how much does DDR5 speed even matter for the Ryzen 7800X 3D with its huge amount of vCache? We tested four kits of DDR5, 
The Team Group Kit, which retails for $135, a G-Skill Trident Z5 Neo 2x16GB kit running at 6000 CL30 with AMD Expo Profile for $140, an Oloy Blade RGB 2x8GB kit running at 5600 CL36, which is only $90, and a Kingston Fury Beast 2x16GB kit running at 5200 CL40, which retails for about $80, but you can also find in a 2x8 gigabyte kit for only $59. We tested three games at 1080p and 1440p to see how big a difference RAM made with our setup. Let's start off with Watchdog Legion, tested at 1080p and 1440p using the second highest quality preset. And look at that, at 1080p virtually no difference between any of the kits. Jumping up to 1440p, and again we see no difference between any of the tested kits whatsoever. Over to Ryzen Zero Dawn, tested at the preferred quality preset at 1080p, and look at that, no significant difference between any of the RAM kits tested. Unsurprisingly, 1440p testing tells a similar story, with again no discernible difference. Finally, we tested Modern Warfare 2 at the balanced preset at 1080p, and there's just no difference, even though as we move up to 1440p, we can see there was a CPU bottleneck at 1080p as we haven't dipped much going to the higher resolution. Looking at the summary of all three games tells us that at least in these titles tested with a Radeon GPU, RAM speed it just doesn't matter very much to the 7800X 3D. We do know that NVIDIA GPUs require a lot more CPU headroom than AMD Radeon ones, so it is possible that with something like the RTX 4090 at 1080p, we might see more of a difference. But at that point, you're already spending enough that another $60 to $100 on a faster RAM kit probably isn't gonna break your bank. So unlike with the non-X3D Ryzen 7000 CPUs, RAM speed just doesn't seem to matter much to the Ryzen 7800X 3D. If I had to guess, I'd say it's likely the massive amount of Vcache on a single CCD that's doing most of the heavy lifting here, making RAM speed far less relevant. So overall, I'd recommend getting at least DDR5 5200CL40 or faster RAM. And there really isn't any benefit to getting an AMD Expo timing kit over an XMP profile kit. There's also not really any difference between 2x8 gigabytes and 2x16 gigabytes. So if you're trying to stretch your budget to invest more in your GPU, the RAM is definitely one area we can cut back. What about the best motherboard for the Ryzen 7800X 3D? There's so many great options. But do remember that you're definitely gonna need a motherboard with BIOS flashback. Luckily, most of the AM5 motherboards come with BIOS flashback as a standard feature, but always make sure to double check before buying. Now, because we were doing our build with a pre-release BIOS, there were only four boards we could choose from. Basically, each of the board partners flagship motherboards. Now, Gigabyte was kind enough to send over their X670E Aorus Master for the build, which is honestly the best AM5 motherboard that I've worked with and is the most affordable of all the flagship X670E boards at $499. Comes with a postcode, upgraded ALC1220 audio, four M.2 slots, including a PCIe Gen 5 one, a ton of USB connectivity, very strong Wi-Fi, and absolutely overkill VRM with insanely thin VRM heatsinks and tons of fan headers along with some nice RGB on the board. But what motherboard should you get for the Ryzen 7800X 3D? I generally recommend B650 motherboards for gamers. You just don't need to spend the money on the PCIe Gen 5 speed M.2 and GPU slots as they're more Star Trek than mainstream tech and they won't increase your FPS. One area that has been a major pain point, especially for B650 motherboards, has been RAM compatibility. I found that Gigabyte has done the best job with RAM compatibility on their AM5 boards so far. I do know that some of the other board manufacturers are working on BIOS updates to fix RAM compatibility. So hopefully this is just an early adopter issue as with Ryzen 1000 that gets fully sorted soon. Let me know down in the comments, those of you who have recently built with a B650 motherboard, which board it was, what RAM kit you used, and if you had any issues with compatibility, including if a new BIOS solved it. Check out our best motherboards for Ryzen 7000 guide for more, which we will update in 2023 as the new boards hit the market. Right now, the cheapest B650 motherboards like the Gigabyte B650 DS3H and ASRock B650M HDV run about $140 and include really all the features you need except for upgraded audio. And AMD just announced the release of A620 motherboards with honestly all the features you'll need 
for Ryzen 7800X 3D, including good enough VRMs and VRM heatsinks, starting at around $100, like the ASRock A620M HDV+. If you want upgraded audio on the motherboard, it has been price gated behind much more expensive boards, like the ASUS TUF B650 Plus or MSI B650 Gaming Edge Wi-Fi, going for around $220 to $260. If you want the extra features on those boards, then go for it. But if you just want better audio, I'd recommend getting a more budget board and spending the difference on an external DAC or quality digital audio device like USB headphones instead. I'll leave links in the video description to boards in each price range that I recommend you check out. For the cooler, we have so many great options because of how power efficient the Ryzen 7800X 3D is. Now, AMD recommended a 280 millimeter AIO cooler, but honestly, I think it's total overkill. Originally, we were gonna go with the Deepcool LS520 240mm all-white ARGB cooler for $109. But due to a shipping issue, it just didn't arrive on time. So instead, I grabbed this Vetru 360mm ARGB white AIO out of the closet, which you can get for about the same price. Under a 10-minute all-core stress test in Cinebench R23, this cooler has kept our Ryzen 7800X 3D to a maximum temperature of 80 degrees well below the 89 degrees Celsius operating temperature that AMD said the CPU is going to try and hit. This also means we can set our fan curve to a much quieter one. And the ARGB, it looks amazing. Honestly, I think this CPU would be relatively easy to cool with most 240 millimeter AIO coolers or even affordable mid-range dual tower air coolers like the Thermalright Peerless Assassin SE120 for just $40. Yes, the cooler that I just keep recommending because it's so good, or the Deepcool AK620 right here for about $65. I'll leave some coolers that I would recommend linked down in the video description below. For storage, in addition to the RAM kits they sent over, Kingston Fury sent us their Renegade 2TB Gen 4 SSD with included heatsink. Now this is a high performance SSD really intended for professional users needing lightning fast write speeds under heavy sustained load. But at $180, it's probably overkill for most gamers. And if you do get it with a motherboard that already has M.2 heatsinks on it, like our Aorus X670E Master, then I'd get it without the heatsink for about $15 less. It is nice that it comes into up to four terabyte sizes for those that need a lot of storage. But if you are just gaming, then instead I'd opt for a much more affordable two terabyte M.2 NVMe drive like the Kingston NV2 or Silicon Power A80 for just $99. Or for 10 bucks less, you can get something like the Team Group MP33 or Silicon Power A60, which would also be fine. Another area that the Ryzen 7800X 3D allows us to save money on the platform cost is the power supply. Now the Ryzen 7800X 3D, it's way more power efficient than any of its more expensive performance competitors like the i9 13900K. And in most cases, that will be the difference between needing a higher capacity PSU and a cheaper, lower capacity PSU, especially given that PSU prices spike up substantially once you get over a thousand watts to the 1200 watt models. If you haven't seen our best PSU buying guide for 2022, we recommend taking the total system draw estimated in PC Part Picker and multiplying by 1.5. Given our estimated wattage, our PSU requirement then comes out to be just under a thousand watts using our formula. So we went with the brand new version of the MSI A1000G, an A tier rated 1000 watt PSU on the PSU cultus list, which we purchased on Amazon for $199. The new version includes a PCI IE Gen 5 16 pin connector and cable. It's a fantastic fully modular design. And if you're using a case with a PSU shroud cutout, then it looks quite amazing as well. For the case, I wanted to try out the new Lee and Lee Landcool 216 for $119. Seeing as we used the Lee and Lee Landcool 215 in our Ryzen 5950X video editing build last year, and we came away somewhat disappointed with it due to not being able to top mount a 280 millimeter AIO, despite Lee and Lee listing compatibility. The cheaper build quality, the non-functional ARGB hub that ours came with, and a lot of other building pains all soured our experience. I wanted an amazing white build for this one, and I heard that the Landcool 216 was greatly improved, so we decided to give it a shot, and honestly, I came away thoroughly impressed by the Landcool 216. With the exception of the large signature front fans, 160 millimeters instead of 200 millimeters in the older version, this is a totally redesigned case. The top's removable for easy AIO installation, the cable management just makes so much sense. The build quality is on another level, and every part of this case is designed to come apart for 
easy installation. And it looks absolutely amazing. Though we did swap out the rear 140 millimeter non RGB fan for one of my favorite Cooler Master Halo 120 millimeter ARGB fans. But this is a case that I strongly recommend. If you're looking to spend a little less, the good news is that the Deepcool CK560 that we use in our Ryzen 5800X3D build, it's back in stock for around $89. And the Fantex P400 a RGB version is just $89 as well if you want to go with a 240 millimeter AIO cooler or air cooler instead and save some money. As we spec'd out this build, and it's extremely premium, it's about $2,800 US dollars right now, but that includes high end components. If you want a similar performance for less with a cheaper B650 motherboard, an air cooler, MSRP 7900 XTX, 5600 CL36 RAM kit, and cheaper SSD and other components, you're looking at closer to $2,100 for similar performance. I'll list out the parts for the more budget version in the description as well. So let's roll the music and build the ultimate Ryzen 7 7800X3D gaming build. Let's jump into the gaming benchmarks as this build is best suited to insanely high FPS at 1440p or high FPS at 4K using the RX 7900 XTX. In Assassin's Creed Valhalla, we got 181 average FPS with a 1% low of 132 FPS at 1440p using the second highest quality preset. And at 4K, we got 113 average FPS with a 1% low of 76. In Modern Warfare 2, using the built-in benchmark at balanced settings, we pumped out an insane 184 FPS at 4K with a 1% low of 128 FPS. In Horizon Zero Dawn, using the preferred quality preset at 4K, we pumped out 128 average FPS with a 1% low of 105. And in Watch Dogs Legion, using the second highest quality preset, we got 124 average FPS at 4K with a 1% low of 105. So should you build the 7800X3D or should you go with the i9-13900K or Ryzen 7950X3D instead? Or should you drop down to the Ryzen 7700, the i5-13600K or even the 7600 instead? Quite honestly, any of these are great options if you're primarily gaming and even doing production work like video editing. The cheaper Ryzen 7600 and 7700 as well as the i5-13600K are great options for those who are trying to stretch their dollars and they can't quite reach up to a faster GPU like the 7900 XTX or the RTX 4080. But for those who have the budget for those GPUs or the RTX 4090, the Ryzen 7800X3D makes a lot of sense. It doesn't have the dual CCD issue that the Ryzen 7950X3D has, where it needs to turn off the second CCD that doesn't have vCache for it to run its best, and it's way more power and cooling efficient than the 13900K. So if you're just gaming and looking to put together one of the highest performance gaming PCs for between $2,100 and 
$3,500, then the Ryzen 7800X3D is the choice paired with an ultra high end GPU. Check out all the product links, including this full build in the video description. And if you got value out of the video, please give it a like because it makes a huge difference to the channel and really helps out. And of course, subscribe and click that bell icon. That way you get notified when we release cool content. If you're looking for the best gaming monitor to go with this build, check out our best gaming monitor guide right here where we cover some of the amazing 1440p and 4K gaming monitors. And we'll catch you on the next one.